three, two, one. Let's go! go! I'm the host of the PBE podcast, Troy Tittlemeyer. I'm sitting at Image 2023 at the Microseismic Inc. booth. Microseismic Inc. has been around for 20 years. We're going to talk about the technology that's been around for 20 years in this podcast. What do you guys think of the event? We'll start with you. Introduce yourself. Quick introduction. What do you think of this uh, this this exhibit hall this year? Oh, it's great this year. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of energy. Yeah, it's good. Nice, nice. And your name, <laughs> title? Mike, Mike Thornton, um, CTO here at Microseismic. Chief Technical Officer, sir. Keaton Sheffer, uh, data scientist, software engineer, and yeah, definitely noticed a lot more software companies and. You know, AI kind of focused companies. Yeah. So pretty interesting. Been seeing a lot of that yeah. too. Well, image is like this this idea that we can ride the the razor's edge of technology and applications for geoscience. Um, you know, we're we're trying to do that in everything that we do. We want to be reliable, we want to be repeatable. We don't want to get stuck in that rut, so we're not innovating and we're not changing with the right technology and with the times when needed. In this podcast, I really want to get behind your experience and kind of where are you coming from, Keaton. So let's rock it way back, man. Where are you from? What degrees did you get? Major mentors along the way. Introduce yourself. Yeah, so from St. Louis, Missouri. Ah. Uh, and had a, a drafting teacher that said, hey, you should go to A&M and make 120 grand out of college and in the industry, in the oil and gas industry. I guess he had a brother in, at BP. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, I knew I wanted to do some kind of engineering or something technical. And so went right to A&M, on. loved it, went to a game and, and toured the campus, loved it, uh, and went into geophysics. Um, Did, so then, Was your mom or dad on the geoscience nope. side of things? No one on geos, nope. just a drafting teacher said. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> I wanted to do wow. some kind of engineering or, or something, something technical. Wow. Yeah. Like this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We are adjusting sound on the fly here. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, all right, so you, you get you're going into geophysics. Let's are you a St. Louis Rams fan? I was, yes, yes. Until they went back to LA, then yeah, you're like, you can have it LA. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> the, the general consensus, yep. I hear you. I hear you. Well cool, man. So what were you into as as a kid? What sports? Yeah, uh, sports, uh, building things, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. So generally, you know, the, the engineering track was was pretty pretty intuitive. obvious. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't really know again what kind of track I would go in that. Um, right. Found geophysics, and then kind of quickly into that, found computer science programming. Uh, I realized a lot of what we were learning and, and being taught is in Excel or a little bit of MATLAB. Right. And that there's a lot more potential for a programming language, and if you really understood it, to to, to go far in, in geophysics. So. so when you were a kid, we were kind of still in somewhat of the analog era, I would imagine, with video games. Were you breaking apart your, like, su- Super Nintendo and, like, <laughs> yeah, I would, I would PlayStation break 1? All yeah, Legos, you know, all, all of that was, was kind of the constant. Yeah. And now we're just sending it through the airwaves. You know, we got right, Wi-Fi go. and all this stuff. Like, you, <laughs> you kind of lived through that transition. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so A and M, you get your degrees, and then what happens? So then I took a data science consulting job at Cap Gemini right out of college. Uh, basically, I was at the career fair, and they said they hired geophysicists, but really it was just every science major that they listed, because <laughs> <laughs> not many people were hiring geophysicists at the time. Yeah. Um, but I, I kind of fell in love with the fact that you know they they were in kind of all the different industries and. Um, got to learn about a, a bunch of different industries, so pharma, oil and gas, consumer products, really, um, all that. So got to see a, a very diverse, you know, problem set of all these Fortune 500 companies, how they solve data problems, um, what they implemented at scale. Dr. Thornton, please a quick elevator pitch: who you are, and then he's passing the buck. He wants you to simply explain <laughs> geophysics. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. Uh yeah, I, I actually had a high school mentor, too, uh, a uh, physics teacher who was actually a geophysicist who uh, told Whoa. me about geophysics, and I thought, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. So then I, uh, I ended up at A&M as well. Um, How about that? They had geophysics scholarship, and my dad said, oh, they're going to send you to school for free? Yeah, hell yeah, you're going. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I ended up at A&M. Wow. But, uh, yeah, did a master's, and then I uh, got a job at Exxon. Uh, doing seismic processing. Did that for 12 years. Then, seismic processing. Yeah, that's what everybody's doing around here. You know, all of these companies, all kinds of seismic imaging 
you know, depth imaging, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then uh, went to another vendor, Veritas, who doesn't exist anymore. Who got swallowed by CGG. Oh wow! And uh, then I then I came to Microseismic, uh, and along the way I picked up a PhD. So nice. But anyway, geophysics is uh, wow. Uh, physics of the Earth, I guess. <laughs> uh, trying to tie measurable physical properties to rocks and, and try and see if we can look inside the earth right yeah where does the birth of geophysics come from like what's the history of that like oh, you know i don't know is it was it like how do you how do you how, how are you hearing my voice like what was the first concept of you know the the part a sound that's that's bouncing the particles you know as i'm speaking as you're hearing them and can, well, you know, like, i know they've been at least like 1900 they were doing early seismology Wow. So it, it's at least 120 something years old. Could be older. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty fascinating stuff. Okay, so you get your degrees, you come into seismic processing. This is in the 80s? Yeah, 89. Yeah. 89, you're you're seeing the sound My waves first come job, back. Yeah, yeah. You're mathematically putting it all back together in the processing yeah, uh, yeah. world. Yeah, back uh when it was all tapes and uh, IBM was the biggest machine around. Well, we had a Cray at Exxon. That was pretty kind of cool. <laughs> I got to play with, you know, supercomputers. I thought that was really neat. Whoa. You know? They were doing, like, megabyte speeds. Of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crazy stuff like that, yeah. <laughs> all right. So if we're going to talk about kind of this, this idea of digital transformation, we've been talking about it generally for a long time. We're certainly in it. We have a digital transformation upon us. What is, how do you explain, how do you walk someone through that? You go from analog, do you have like good analogies that take you from like, what it was, what was it like before? Why is it so much more efficient now? And, and how are we managing this thing to, to become even more efficient uh, and more reliable? Well, it's all about managing data volumes because, you know, like with AI and e-commerce and everything, this, there's just a flood of data, and you know what we're trying to—the the kind of business that we're, we're working on now, the uh, 24/7 permanent monitoring for geothermal or karst right. or carbon—is right. just this continuous stream of data. And what it was, what we have been doing, is really kind of batch processing. We would get, you know, a couple of weeks worth of data, and we would queue it all up, process it through look at the results and, and kind of work the project through. This is like in the 80s? This is like the workflow? This is like the... two, three years ago. Oh, right? whoa. Yeah, it's, it hasn't changed, right? Batch processing. So it, it's all about setting up, you know, you, you get a lot of data. We've been right. doing big data for, since the 60s in geophysics. But we, it, it's all been kind of, um, like I said, like a batch, big, big chunks of data. And what we're really trying to transition to here is more of a, a pipeline, more of an automated process where we can do this continuous 24-7 monitoring of, uh, of these uh, sensor arrays. So, you know, wow. so we, we can do the, uh, the earthquake monitoring you know, that we need to do you know, to uh, help people do these kinds of things, right? Right, right. How does it get, so you're, you're getting a constant stream of information in is it saving that? Yeah. Everything's oh, yeah. being saved? I think it's safe for a while, yeah. Oh, okay. you know, eventually we write it off the tape or whatever, but yeah, you know, most of it does get archived, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, so when the digital transformation, the future of digital and where you're coming from, you again, you were playing with it when you were a kid naturally, seeing what how this information was coming through wires and color versus black and white, like how it all worked, and now you're, you're hands-on in a company that's now passively monitoring all kinds of different situations for either geothermal, oil and gas production, karst identification, carbon sequestration, cap rock integrity. You guys are getting all kinds of different data coming in. What's, like, what's your day-to-day? -day? What's your role, and how do you see this going for yourself? Yeah, so kind of when I oh, started shit, about four years off. ago, right, These I mics have yeah. basically um, been entirely in the cloud. So all of the processing and everything has been cloud-based, right? So I kind of skipped over the HPC in your, you know, the on-prem servers, right? So 
Uh, I've kind of only been in, in the cloud and, and been dealing with, with that, so it's interesting to, to be able to take this. And right, I've seen a bunch of examples of how it works, and so so now, yeah, going back to in MicroSeismic, we're taking something that's on-prem and, and moving it to cloud, so. Interesting. I don't know anything about that besides I see it all the time. You know, cloud-based and stuff like that. What? It, it's basically just a computer that someone else owns, that, that someone else is storing. You, you, and know, you, rent you buy it. time on yeah. somebody else's machines, right? Ah, so it's a building of hard drive somewhere that you have access to use that space. You have yep. a deal with them to use that space. That's cloud-based yep. solutions, cloud-based. Yep. Yep. So Simple it, as that. <laughs> is that... That's interesting to think about. So when, when you think of MicroSeismic Inc. and progressing through these times where we're talking about building these very futuristic cities, instead of having these pipelines uh, and electrical and all this, like for the city of Houston, where there's no real monitoring except for really what you can see, uh, now we're going to do fiber down all these lines. And so you can see, hey, there's a pinpoint, like there's a little pinhole in the middle of the, the event center. No one would have seen that for five years until it became a massive hole, and then there's a huge problem, and now you have to shut the whole event center down. Right. We're, like, we're changing that, and MicroSeismic Inc. is really on the forefront of that with the DOE contract you guys recently got, working with Terra 15. I'm fascinated with this whole idea. As a, the digital transformation and like attaching a software to that system, how does, how does that actually work? How, what's it... What's it? It's taking in the data live, and then it it's it's just running algorithms on that data and compartmentalizing anomalies and doing linear regressions. Like, what's what's the software doing? <laughs> so, <laughs> what it, it's looking for specific patterns in the data. So when when an earthquake happens, uh, we know where all the sensors are, and we're, we're looking for a very distinct pattern. And if we see that pattern, then we're going to try and figure out where in space that event ha happens, and we're going to try and refine that, and once we finally figure out where that event happens in the subsurface, then we're going to try and uh, make some measurements of that event so we can we can uh, characterize how the Earth broke, right? Whoa. So whether it's a fault slip, you know, whether it's slipping vertically or if it's uh, slipping horizontally or something more complicated, an explosion, an implosion, you know, there's, there's a lot of things you can tell just from the, the radiated vibration, right? Wow. And the, the software is watching that 24-7. As that data is right. being streamed live, essentially, it's watching it and, and trying to compute some of the basics of that. Yeah, it's looking for specific patterns, and so it, it's continuously fitting different sets of patterns to it. Wow. And as soon as it finds something that, that uh, matches, you know, we, a little flag goes up, and then we start uh, honing in on it. Wow, yeah. right on. Which pro What kind of projects right now are you most excited about with MicroSeismic that you're working on? Yeah, so uh, what Mike is saying is it kind of flags these events automatically, um, but we still have a manual process. So there's okay. a human in the loop that will go through and you know verify that these are all true events. Um, so one thing we're working on now is a machine learning algorithm, uh, image classification, basically is a, a pre-processor to that. Uh, human in the loop, right? To to say, yep, this is ah. a real signal. This is not. So hopefully, can reduce the amount that the the human has to look at by, by you know order of magnitude or two. And so I think that's that's something that you know has a ton of promise. Um, it'll make the analysts more efficient. They can work on other things. They don't have to worry about you know, kind of manually reviewing these images. Um, so that's I think probably one of the more interesting ones. Yeah, that is cool. That's cool. So that's yeah. that's primarily what you're working on. You're seeing where the humans coming in. And where it doesn't have to come in, maybe, and right, you're yeah. trying to optimize, yeah. reducing the amount they have to look at and look through. So instead yeah. of, you know, the the P set, which is the the software, is already reducing the, the amount that they have to look by orders of magnitude. And wow. This is kind of another step change in that. Hopefully, right. is the idea. Wow. And you, and it has obviously ways to see if it's bad data, like if it's just something might be wrong with the equipment. It. It has the ability to kind of yeah. That's what we're we're trying to train it that way, right? Yeah. So we, we give it a lot of good data, a lot of bad data. Oh wow! And, it, and it's uh, you know one of these uh, image classification kind of problems. You know. Right on. And uh, so as, as far as carbon sequestration, the karst karsting events, your geothermal, the oil and gas, where are you seeing most of the business right now with MicroSeismic? Most of the focus of the next five years. Uh, 
I don't know. I, it, from what I'm seeing at the show here, it looks like carbon's going to be taken off big wow. time. I mean, I, I, there's a uh, there's a lot of money. The government's dumping a lot of money into it. There's a lot of interest. Um, I think, you know, the monitoring part of it is, is going to be uh, early in the, in the process. We're going to be right up on the front end. And I, I think we're, we're probably going to see that part of the, the business grow the fastest in the next few years. Cool. Uh, what about for you, Keaton? Yeah, I, I think that's yeah very fair. Um, the car load, I, I know we have a lot of projects um, and, and a lot more coming in the pipeline. And, and those, to me, are a challenging one. Well, the, the carbon's simple, or similar in the fact that it's a 24-7 monitoring. So there's a ton of data coming constantly and, and have to have right. that. You know the processing really dialed in and and make sure it, it's reliable and you know good to go 24/7. Uh, always always kicking off the next one. Always processing uh, new events and, and all that. So you know you stack up a number of those projects and, and that's a, a huge amount of data, huge volume of, of data yeah. flowing through your system. So yeah, it becomes a logistical problem really. Yeah. Right. Um, all right. So Micro Seismic Inc. has been listening to very subtle sound pops in the subsurface coming back to your surface arrays of microphones that are listening and that whole concept but now we're saying that there's there's uh, like a co2 right the co2 is going to sequester into this reservoir below what we're saying is appears to be a cap rock that has integrity is is it micro seismic that's now getting into the idea that you can you can also sniff for the co2 gases and methane leaks or are you partnering with companies that have that equipment and you guys are, Micro Seismic's always just focusing on the, the sound, the Micro Seismic. Okay, yeah, well, like Micro Seismic proper is going to be listening for the sound of the rock break. Yeah. And if everything's going right, we should never hear anything, right? Because ah. that means everything's <laughs> yeah. going in, everything's staying where it's supposed to. Um, so, But, you know, there, there's there are legal requirements to keep an eye and make sure that things stay where they're put. Um, we're also, we are partnering, partnering with other uh, companies who are going to be putting, say, atmospheric sensors uh, nice. in the same kinds of, in our, on our um, stations where we have our, our sensors and our telemetry. And so we can, we can kind of have a uh, one-stop shopping for monitoring. Right? That's all integrated. You get right. access to that. They get access to your stuff. It's all one data stream. It all wow. comes back. You know, it's all delivered to the uh, to the operator at the same place, same time. Now, are the cities getting really behind this and this idea of the, you know, building this very futuristic infrastructure? Is is there a lot of government funding and city funding in that? Like uh, a lot of push for si good civil engineering like this? Uh, I, th I don't think it's the city so much as it is the federal government. Oh wow! I mean, it's the the DOE is pushing right it. I know there's there's a big. Uh, push in Canada from the, the federal government, uh, the EU. There's a lot right of stuff on. going on. Yeah. Man. So I mean, because these are these are huge projects. They have yeah. big incentive projects to put uh, to put money out there to kind of seed this whole carbon capture idea, which, you know, frankly, I think has to happen if we're right. gonna if we're gonna make this work at all. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, the technology for sure is happening. That's right. the that's the benefit of it all. For me, in my perspective, is just. The technology and our ability to actually do this and have gentlemen like people like you that are working on these problems every day to try to build something that can can actually do this is a major achievement in itself. Whether the results of all that, however that goes, that to me is is definitely the future. Why wouldn't we want a building that has fiber going through every bit of it so we just better understand where all the problems are potentially happening. How we, we have to get better at eliminating waste and waste in the sense of just our time and attention of digging over in that side of the building because that's where the water's coming out of, but the leak's actually on right, this side. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. crazy how much you waste. Know, it, it, it's, uh, you talk about smart buildings and smart cities. It's like, you know, there's no advantage in being dumb, right? <laughs> <laughs> Right. No, I guess besides, hey, uh, it's not my fault. Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, we're, we're, technology's coming to the point where we can do this kind of thing. Yeah, that's you know? what's cool. And that's that's kind of what we're, you know, we're talking about, you know, revamping our tool set. Because, I mean, there's there's a lot of amazing tools out there. There's a lot of data coming our way, and we really need to uh, 
handle it. <laughs> Man. Well, thank you guys for putting in the time and attention for that. Hey, I'm well, really thanks. excited about that. I look forward to staying connected with Microseismic Inc., all the papers you write or presentations you guys give, the partnerships, all the things that you can say about those and, and these projects. I'm I'm really, really interested in how this all goes with Terra 15 and everywhere, all this that you guys are building. It's fascinating. All right, great. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having Thank us. you, sir. Thank you, Keaton. Thank you.